Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Technically Unsure where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? So today we are going to take a look at a board from Heart Kernel. We have looked at some other boards from this company and the board that we are going to take a look at today is actually Odroid M2. So there was an Odroid M1 which I have it around here which is based on RK3568 B2 but this new one Odroid M2 is based on RK3588 S2 so the difference is huge what they are saying for on the Odroid M2 website is that the multi-processing performance is three times faster and it uses LPDDR5 and the memory bandwidth is twice higher GPU is five times faster and NPU is three times faster and uh, onboard 64 gigabyte eMMC storage this twice faster so they are claiming that this is uh, a lot better than the previous m1 but in general we are going to take a look at it how good it is compared to anything else mainly let's say like a raspberry pi 5 so before further ado let me show you what i got i received this box exactly like that let me take this out okay all right so we got the us plug over here okay and we got the 12 volt power adapter which this snaps right there and we got the invoice and let me actually look at the invoice i forgot the price but i believe it was 115 dollars here you go so the grand total is 145 but the board is 115 and the shipping is 25 dollars and taxes and other stuff and five dollars for the power supply so i'm gonna be fair to them and i'm gonna say it's a 115 dollar computer so power adapter is add-on and the shipping i'm not gonna count as a cost for this oh yeah i saw it on their website they were saying that they are also going to give this uh case for free included in the kit so this is nice i was not expecting that definitely so it seems like you have to do it yeah like that okay so in terms of what we see here so there is a m.2 slot over here in the back and i'm gonna install an nvme ssd over here this is a uart connection there's an uh, rtc battery which i believe you have to put cr2032 or something like that and then on top we have the fan pre-installed which is amazing actually saves time money and looking for additional component and all that stuff so it all ready to go it even came in a case so if you consider that yeah it's almost same price as a raspberry pi 5 i would say so this one you need a hat to have a m.2 slot and this collectively combined this is hundred dollars hundred five dollars eight gigabyte ram and this is also by the way eight gigabyte ram version so kind of on par in terms of price now we have to see the performance okay gpio wise they are a few millimeters yeah they are a little bit a few millimeters off so what i'm gonna guess and say is you can't use the hats on raspberry pi on this but a few millimeters off and uh, in terms of io usb 3.2 power adapter gigabit ethernet wish it was 2.5 but it's gigabit ethernet hdmi is here and usb 2 is here there is a usb c over here and this is the micro sd card slot it's okay but i prefer the ones that i uh, have like spring much easier there is a power button over here a reset button over here and this is the boot selector so micro sd or emmc so we are on the micro sd by default which we are going to use so yeah not much else over here uh, i will try to now quickly install nvme ssd a battery and power it up yeah, and then oops and then i'm gonna not use the case because i want it to open i want to see everything and maybe even use gpio if the documentation is good enough so yeah give me a couple of minutes let me get everything ready let's go into fast forward okay so the company itself provides an android image and an ubuntu image so we're gonna go back to ubuntu i don't have much to do in android but i just want to show you very quickly this is the n22 benchmark result took a while i let it run and that's the result i got and here is the geekbench 5 score 
okay single core 561 multi-score 2282 and this is an android stock android image doesn't even get the fan spinning when it is uh you know doing the benchmarks but anyway here are the results detected all the stuff it is playing videos very well it is doing that's a score and it comes with a rooted android so basically if you go to the emulator and if you do su dash and uh, you are root now okay so if you do ls you will see all the applications which and then also i downloaded a bunch of apks and i couldn't install Install it double click doesn't work so you have to come here and just say pm install and then the apk file name and that's how i was able to install and tutu and other benchmarks okay and as you can see the idling is like four or five watts at uh, three watts even when you're not doing much with it okay so we don't want to go there much with android i don't have anything else to try just a bunch of apks it's working you can use this as a android device maybe even a android tv if you go to the settings here you will be able to also see in the about section that it is using android 13 okay and these are the information everything is working okay ethernet is working and uh, yeah i was able to install applications do benchmarks so android wise you won't have issues you just have to manually install play store or install the apps you need yourself or use some other third party app store like Android and other stuff okay that being said i'm gonna switch to the ubuntu okay let's go to ubuntu and take it from there okay as you can see we booted into ubuntu one of the first things that i want to show you is the gpio here is the odroid m2 gpio headers and connectors so what i just randomly did was i selected two pins so one in here one is the 11 so this one from the left side so this is the ground pin and i selected the next pin which is pin 11 so i put the ground on the ground and the red one the voltage one vc one to the 11 okay and as you can see for now it's at zero volts okay so as you can see the pin 11 is equal to sysfs pin 124 so what we have to do is we just have to say 124 echo that to sys class gpio export okay and then echo direction to be out to sys class gpio gpio 124 direction and echo one to sys class gpio gpio 124 value now look at it there you go now it's three and if i go back and change that to one that's zero okay so gpio absolutely works documentation rocks everything is good on that note now let's do some benchmarks so quick easy ones is it testing the gigabit ethernet to 1611 let's see and yes it is a gigabit ethernet that's definitely within the range acceptable range of a gigabit ethernet and now in terms of sysbench let's do a quick sysbench also you can see that there is a temperature monitor over there sysbench okay so we are getting 14,000, and just for reference raspberry pi 5 you will get around 10,500. so you get 10,500 in raspberry pi 5 you're getting 14,000 over here but the better test is stress ng let's speed it up let me do this one okay as you saw during the footage when i was doing stress engine using all the cores it was going up to 11.1 watts and we are getting 1200 okay for reference again raspberry pi 5 you will get 870 900 so it is definitely faster than raspberry pi 5. another thing i wanted to make sure that it works is actually the nvme ssd let me see if that is detected see yep that is detected okay so what i'm gonna do is just uh, do a speed test on this one okay that is actually honestly a little bit disappointing but there is some error in the ioctl the device and whatnot so i will check it differently but let's see why that happened so i did a quick fio test for the nvme ssd and this is the speeds that i am getting so the read speeds are as follow it is a little bit slow so if we do lspci hvv i wonder if it is okay so this is the samsung nvme ssd and capabilities so it looks like it is actually set properly but maybe that's the speed it is getting max that's the speed so i'm not sure but i believe this is a little bit low uh, i was expecting more but anyway that's the fio results okay so we checked a little bit with hd form stress ng suspension iperf and uh, we checked the gpio these are all working one thing that worries me not really worries me but temperature never went up to 50 on any of the sensors right there is one 
one sensor that's 68 but i don't know but it just the fan at boot yes it turns on and starts spinning and all that so i know it works but like i don't know when it fires so i think this is hot a little bit not that much but it's a little bit hot why not just cooler or you know it's just a little bit cooler and running it more but it doesn't run anyway it's saving power but yeah it doesn't start spinning and another thing i want to test is actually a default on the os also i want to let you one thing to be honest this operating system that they provided is janky so i can't let that slide i will explain what i mean so for instance I installed this right if I try to open up display settings look what happens just nothing okay there's something is crashing in the back there's something is wrong and if you try to install uh, you know operating system upgrades like do a sys upgrade it will just uh, stop booting altogether it will crash and now let's see how it does with 4k video absolutely not killing it yeah so it started dropping frames yeah the 4k is definitely dropping frames nope you can't do 4k 1080p Okay, 1080p doing fine. But again, I have to remind you that this is a 4K resolution with no scaling, okay? Because I can't get anything to change, it doesn't work. Okay, so 1440p definitely also drops frame. So that's the limit. So I don't know why that happens. And this is a little bit very janky. As I said, I tried to do upgrade on the APT to crash the OS. I tried to do distribution upgrade, crash the OS. I flashed the fresh image again on the SD card just to get to this point. And when the operating system they provided, it's janky. I will let you know just many things is not working Android though it's okay it was working you just have to install your Play Store and other apps that you need to just download the APKs but in the Ubuntu image uh, it's janky so if there is a better OS image uh, use that and hopefully Odroid team will fix this but other than that I believe I covered everything a little bit disappointed on the speeds I think on the NVMe and also generally disappointed that this board just came out and it is powerful SOC but it's just a gigabit ethernet would really prefer a 2.5 at this point from now on from the, all the new SBCs that are coming out but it is what it is the power consumption as you can see idle when the ubuntu is up and i'm not really doing anything it is like six watts in android it was lower to be fair it was like three four watts and if you're running full eight cores under full maximum consumption and using it it is going to be 11.1 watts yeah the case is beautiful i have to admit case is beautiful and the fan pre installed and it is working fine the heat dissipation i can feel it is hot a little bit and uh yeah uh, gpio is documented very well everything is actually documented very well in this odroid wiki so you can see this is odroid m2 and all this stuff is in right there okay thanks for watching let me know if you have any questions or you want me to test certain things and uh, i will try to do those and reply to you if i don't know the answer to certain questions i will ask the odroid team and let you all know okay thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video Bye for now.